What's, What's up, guys? guys? Welcome, Welcome back to our channel. channel. It's your boy Mike and Veronica. And we're back at it with another video for y'all. So we are new parents, guys. <laughs> yes, new. believe it or not. <laughs> exactly, new life, new everything. Everything has changed, but for the good. Yes, <laughs> it's been fun so far. So we have a one-month-old baby boy. Mm -hmm. His name is Brooklyn. Yeah. And for you new to this channel, we just wanted to introduce ourselves. And today we're going to be sharing with you guys our birth story. Yep. So if you're new to this channel, we appreciate y'all stopping by. We hope y'all enjoy our content. And if you aren't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell button so you always know when we post our videos. So today is going to be real simple. We're going to give y'all, like Ronka said, the birth story of day one. To day three, yeah. no. <laughs> well, from right before he came out till now, so. Yeah. I mean, honestly, reflecting back right now, I just like feel that stress and like being that overwhelmed when I was, you know, like I was so anxious, both of us actually, probably, mm -hmm. to meet him already, to, you know, see that he's healthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was most important. It's just literally, it was so many emotions, so much emotions at once. Uh, I've been so blessed, I gotta say that from the very beginning, uh, my pregnancy journey has been nothing but great. Yeah. I can admit right now that I had an easy pregnancy, mm -hmm. so thankfully this entire process was smooth, I would say for both of us. One thing yeah. I definitely uh, might have to deal with is my uh, all over the place the emotions. hormones, the emotions. That was one thing that definitely... Uh, I could not control as much as I thought I would be able to. It was it was insane, but that is true, y'all. So all you fellas out there that have not went through this yet, it is true that the emotions and the, the hormones are <laughs> all so over you just the place. gotta be there. You just gotta take it, <laughs> have cool, it however you want. But you know, just keep in mind that, like we really women, I think pregnant women, like you know, the hormones just cause that you don't feel like yourself like you know what i mean like you're just triggered easily uh but also super like like i said super emotional i would like cry just out of the blue and mike would uh, look at me and like did he say something what happened like what is wrong with you you know and I'm, i was just like i don't know like i don't know i can tell you i wasn't even thinking about anything particular to explain you know why yeah but she, so, she good now though. She's on that. She's, 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 she's I was good. Over. It just it was just like that unusual. But again, there there there's a lot of things that comes with it. So yeah. let us not uh, extend that beginning, you guys. Uh, so would you like to start? Yeah, I'm just gonna, yeah. honestly, like like you said, what is my birth story? Would you like to start? <laughs> it's really our birth story, but I'm just keeping real simple with ours. Um, so Veronica's due date was October 11th. That's what we were planning on. I was, honestly, I told everyone that he was going to be born on that day. I thought he was coming later on the 11th. But on the 8th, so a few days before, Veronica started getting, like, major contractions. I remember my dad was coming in town. Veronica's family was coming from Poland. So we started cleaning up the house. We had another home where Veronica's family was going to stay. So we went there on the 8th to start cleaning to clean, up. This like to make heavy. it look good for them, right? All the movement Veronica was doing, she started getting more and more contractions. Like, it came to a point where we had to stop what we was doing and come home. Cause like, it was, it was I too much pain. started my contractions, guys, <laughs> while cleaning. Yeah, it was so that's pain. not a lie. There's like a Polish saying that if you want to, uh, you know, go to the hospital to give birth, just start mopping your floors, like, on your knees and stuff. And I was, I was also... <laughs> she won't mop, won mop on the floor. <laughs> I was, I was mopping, not on, the, on my knees, but I was mopping the floors, like, doing everything there, so... But yes, we had to stop to just like leave yeah, come back to that because I was scared. Like I didn't know what to expect. Like yeah, so that know, was yeah, so that was the ninth of, of the eighth of October. So that night when we came back home, you know, we probably ate a little bit, but throughout the night, so middle of the night, like one, two, three in the morning, Veronica was on the little uh, medicine ball, just in pain, like contraction. So I'm you feeling guys. bad. She, Oh, I started already like, you know, <laughs> like measuring my contractions. There's this yeah. app, you know, I highly recommend like that. You can just like, uh, you know, count uh, the seconds in between contractions, seconds. In this case, it was minutes. But 
to keep this long story short, I had contractions that night every seven, like five minutes. So very close, actually. That is the recommended, you know, uh, amount of time that you should already be heading to the hospital. Yeah. Again, my water didn't break, or uh, again, if if it did, I, I I was not again. I wouldn't be aware because sometimes, you know, as you guys know from the movies, sometimes it just breaks, like. Yeah, uh, like panic mode, yeah. get in a car and you go on the highway. My, that's, I yeah, that's, that's what, what you thing. Thought. I thought it was tripping so up the So I kept on like, telling Mike, like, like, you know, yeah. that might not happen like that. My water might not break at all. Like, and I still may, you know, just head to the hospital and, uh, I mean, uh, and give birth, like, right away. So. Yeah. But uh, then that next, so she ended up going to sleep. She was cool. I mean, no, I, I was not she wasn't asleep. Cool, he was good, you guys. I didn't, no, I didn't really. Him and London, they were not. Well, um, I don't know what else I could do. I was just laying there like I was exhausted. Already. I mean, I you honestly, I was, was so stressful. like again, I was so in pain. Like my body, you know, contractions are like, you know, your your belly tightens up for like those couple seconds. Let's say I had like thirty to forty five seconds contractions, but you're like after hours of that, you guys, you're just so tired. Like your entire body's tight and tense, and you're also stressed. You know, again, tough, but. We went yeah, that through night, the night. Yeah, went through the night. So the next morning. So this is the ninth, the October 9th morning. Ninth. Contractions come again. Like Veronica couldn't take the pain. So we ended up <laughs> taking our bags. Like, we went to the hospital. We pretty much about ready to check in. Think he coming that day. I and actually get, called the doctor guys because yeah. my doctor that uh, was leading me up to the my delivery, she left to Hawaii for her vacation. So I called the doctor that was, was on call, call yeah. and he told me to come into the hospital because I man because they wanted that check they, they want that bread honestly <laughs> the hospital they wanted us no <laughs> he asked me is this your first child I was like yes he's like oh maybe let's not uh, have a baby at home so you guys come on like if you have a first baby you don't know what to expect you obviously going to head to the hospital right away uh, it took us an hour I think because I remember Mike was so stressed you guys I oh mean, no I wasn't stressed I just you were, he was clean the entire party. She was like, yeah, because you know, our, our family was coming. I'm thinking we was going there, and like by the time we came home, they were gonna be here. I didn't want the house. You guys, I'm, I'm in contractions. I'm like, oh, I'm not sitting there. But then again, I had the feeling again that it's not. I'm not gonna be admitted yet. But just in case I wanted to go to the hospital, yeah, I definitely did not want to deliver in that house. Uh, so we went to the hospital. Went to the hospital. We get there. They check everything. They're saying. Everything looks good, but she just wasn't dilated enough. So they yes. sent us home. This is on the night. I was just one and a half centimeter dilated. So it was like nothing yeah, to that they pretty much said, admitted. Just deal with the pain. Like, this is a part of it, really. Like, you gotta, you ain't, it's not, when he not coming yet. <laughs> so yes. we came back home on the night, drove back home. Yes. And she it was said, just all day contractions, right? The, the nurse told me, like, you know, contractions, like, go once they like regular, you know, take advantage of the weather, go for a walk. Yeah, um, you, that, you know, I'm like, walk. don't run the walk, girl, I can't even, like, it was not that bad as it turned out the next night, you guys. We went for a walk to the park. I had contractions. I was with my best friend on the phone, you guys, who has a two-year-old and was telling her like how I feel, everything like about the hospital and had contractions every, I don't know, probably 15 minutes. Uh, it went back to like 15 minutes. So I was like going down on my knees in the park <laughs> for my contractions to like pass. It was just, oh my goodness, when I think about it right now, it was, uh, it was insane, but we came back to the house uh, yeah, again. That night. Very irregular contractions that night. Sorry, guys. Our camera <laughs> needed some CPR. <laughs> <laughs> and our baby needed some milk. Yeah, you need some milk too. Yeah. Milk. She said, I yeah. I would drink, so no, I'm <laughs> kidding. I don't like to drink. Anyways. But getting back to the story, I just want to say that for the fathers, I feel like it's just as hard for the mom because like when you see her, yeah, just you know, as hard. No, nah, but when you just see her, you know, significant other going through so much pain, and you can't do nothing. And uh, you really can't, you can't do nothing, so you just sleep, you guys. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But well, the whole nine months, I took London out every time, every day. So I don't hear nothing. There's a lot of things that we do wow. behind the scenes that they don't see that they no, don't really appreciate. True. No, and like, I just do greatly stuff. appreciate you guys, my husband. Laundry, all that, like this stuff that you know. For about. the support throughout the entire pregnancy, he's been nothing but the best, the greatest supporter. And thanks to uh, you, you know, again, it was that such an easy process as well for me. I'm sure, you know, and such a pleasant experience. 
because if you were not doing all that, the house then would be a mess. I <laughs> she would have no clothes, London, what? Being doodling, peeing all over the place. But that's for another story. Really? That's for another video. Wow. But to get back to the birth story, when we came back on the ninth, you know, she ended up, we ended up going back to sleep. We woke up on the 10th, so the day that our son was born. What do you mean? Who, who, who went to sleep? You, you got some type of rest that night. You had to get some type of rest. You guys, There's no way you so was after hours. coming back from the park, like my contractions were so intense that it was just like, I, they are now from my, my perspective, the story. It was so intense that I just literally, I, I thought that the previous night that was like nothing. So I was so certain like he's coming so soon, uh, but again, I, uh, I was just waiting technically for my words to, to break, to you know make a move and go to the hospital. I definitely did not want to go to the hospital again and like be not admitted. Yeah, they, they sent us back home. So exactly. I definitely was now measuring uh, you know the contractions mm -hmm. and time between to be certain that they're like regular and like every five minutes. Yeah, and low key. We went to the hospital like on crunch time, like literally, I don't think we could have been like any second minute later. But as soon as we got there, you were like perfectly dilated to where you needed to be admitted. Like what, five? So he's already time? spoiling the story, you guys. But because yes. I'm a man, I don't need to go all the way around the what block. I, I need to tell you what it is. Yes, but I do want to mention you guys that I'm a sad for that. Like I actually got my nails done while having those contractions. She, she couldn't wait to tell the story. In the middle of the it. night. Because again, that that's that I did because it was insane. I did my manicure and pedicure. Gel, you guys. That shows she wanted that much pain. She was like over So and I, I just wanna do this recommendation for you guys. So let me actually grab it so you can see. So I have connected with the brand guys from New York called Madame Glam. Uh, and I have received a kit for the gel manicure and they have sent me the kit uh, actually right before my delivery so I'm just now after I tested it a few times I I can honestly tell you guys like this is just such a steal because it is such a tiny and super cute portable LED lamp there's like a little legs in here that you can just open up and like do your mani pedi uh, at home. They have also sent me, of course, like the base and the top coat and I was able to choose some colors. Here you guys can see my nails uh, a little bit, but super cute neutral colors. You guys, they have probably over 100 different colors on their website to choose from. They are very affordable. What's the most important for me is this like environmentally friendly, it's vegan. They're free from 21 most toxic chemicals that are found in the regular nail polish. It lasts like about two weeks. So check them out you guys. I'm going to tag them right here below and also in our description. Uh, because again, that was a, such a steal in terms of for me looking at the prices. Later on if I would like to add more colors to my little collection and the most important it is this tiny portable uh, LED lamp that you can just pack with your whenever wherever you go and it is so cute. So thank you guys from Madame Blanc. I'm gonna tag you right here in this video. So back to the story guys. We came to the hospital and it was already changed in the shift so it was like a different nurse and mm -hmm. uh, it turns out that i've been five centimeters dilated yeah. as you guys know to start we got actually the delivery process you need to be 10 centimeters so i was halfway there so i definitely knew that mm -hmm. they're going to admit us to yeah. the hospital and they said that the baby boy is going to be born the same day yeah we got there, just to give y'all a time frame, we got there around what, like noon, you said? 11. 11. We got there around 11. We got there 11 a.m., guys. Yes. So first they had to, they were asking me all these questions, you guys. I had such a strong contractions at that point that I had to stop, of course, like speaking to go through it for 30, 40 seconds until I could answer any questions. Oh my goodness, you ladies who went through it, you know what I'm talking about? What level of pain is that? And I already knew that I do want to get an epidural. I did not want an medicated birth. So, uh, you know, if I did need a C-section, I was, you know, in my head, fine with it, of course. But I did uh, prefer 
I would call it natural birth, but apparently it's not considered natural birth if you do get an epidural, but to get an epidural uh, to ease the pain a little bit. Mm -hmm. Then they moved us to the delivery room, and I remember I wanted to use the bathroom, and I just got that huge pain, you guys, like that, that literally, like that main contraction when I was like, okay, give me an anesthesiologist, like I need that epidural right now, I can't, I can't stand it anymore. And so they did, uh, and I got the epidural right there. Um, so yeah, um, that was probably around noon already. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was yeah, probably around noon, after noon. And then they came in and shot you up. They did all the IVs, yeah. you know, that I needed. So a couple of the nurses came in just making sure we we're okay. Bronca was on the phone with her family just the whole time, pretty much, like letting the medicine kick in. And once that it wasn't, got, it wasn't oh. as strong at first. She so they, they came in a couple more times, like they increased the dosage, and then when it finally like kind of like tapped out, I don't know. I mean, I, you, you felt I it. exactly. I so, felt it. So I, I mean, honestly, it was just such a blessing. Like that epidural, I was such a fan of it. I I I did have an uh, I don't know if it's an unusual situation, but one of my sides actually was like already completely numb. And, uh, the other leg wasn't so the thing is that you technically shouldn't be completely numb to the point that you don't even feel your contractions you guys but it should be like a moderate level so you still feel it so when the doctor asks you to push you'll be able to to do that unfortunately one of my sides was completely numb you guys and the other i still felt it um again i don't want put out any negative uh, you know opinion about that epidural in here because again I if I had to do it again I would get it but I just thought you know that it is gonna be equally both sides and regardless it was such a blessing and I would totally totally recommend it <laughs> um, that was again somewhere around 1 p.m. yeah and at, at this point when the doctor did come in for the first time was checking Bronco out. I don't know if he broke the water or not, but he was saying like he'll he'll be here around like five or six p.m. So like four or five hours four later. Four or five hours ahead. later. I was already seven sitting there and died later yeah. when the doctor showed up. So, so for the I, first time. I remember texting my dad, like, he'll be here like, you know, around five, six. I texted my mom and dad and everybody. And then I remember like uh doctor left, nurse came back in or whatever for a little bit. They left, so it was just me and Veronica in the room. She's on the phone with her family FaceTime. She's chilling. Like I was on a, the chair, you know, they give it to dad, the little <laughs> picnic chair. <laughs> well, I was just chilling. And then, I don't know if I'm getting ahead of the story yet, but I just remember the nurse randomly came in the room, probably 20, 30 minutes later, and he's and she's like, it's time. This was at two. <laughs> this was at, around like two. That right? was your, right, your Really, like he said, he's like, he's coming out. Like she's seen his yeah, head because, coming Yeah, because, and you guys. And this was like four hours before doctors even said, so like, Definitely, like, yes. Thank God she came in because Bronca obviously didn't feel nothing. She lit on the phone, not her legs like amputated in a way. Like. Yeah, no, I, I was <laughs> numb. Like, I didn't feel it. The thing is that the nurse came to check on me and like lo was looking at the screen. She's like, where, where's the baby? Where, where the ba where, where's the baby at? Like, because my belt actually did like slide down a little bit, but it turned out I'm on, on the monitor. His uh, pulse was so low, and yeah, then all the jumping, yeah. jumping all the way to like 280. So again, it was like a wrong measurement, but it did turn out that the baby was already, you know, he's, he's ready come, to come to the world. He's ready to come. So she told me to lay down right away. It was a kind of like stressful moment, right? Because I did not expect that, you know, like I barely hang up the phone. Yeah, it was a stressful moment, but the nurse she came in calm. Um, she didn't panic at all, which kept us calm, I felt like. Yeah, so she but, did a job but then I knew something is wrong, and she was like, lay down, we'll just let me check where the baby is at. And she is looking, and she's like, oh, his head is right there. You want to yeah. touch it? Like, give me your hand. And I'm like, what in the world? Like, I, I was not, like, you know, mentally ready. I knew he's coming, of course, for two days, but I was just, oh, my goodness. And then, you guys, that stress, like, kicked in right away, like, this adrenaline. I'm looking at Mike, like, I'm like, it's coming, he's coming. <sighs> and that was already around 2 p.m. Yeah, around 2. And... 2.20? Yeah. The nurses already asked, asked me to start pushing without the doctor even being in a room. I know they were waiting for the doctor. 
I don't know if he was at lunch, where he was at, you yeah. guys, but it he was, was somewhere. Like, but he came, he came on time, and he got him out on the right time. I ain't gonna say nothing bad, but yeah, it was good, man. You know, and if you guys haven't seen the last video, it's kind of we got an angle where Veronica was pushing him next to her, so you can check out if you want to see, visualize it. And then he came at three. I'm gonna get to it. He came right at three o'clock on the dot. And three o'clock on the dot, you guys. Was, he had that healthy, just a blessing, so the healthy baby. And he's healthy brought so much joy. Boy. So much joy. It was life. just so unbelievable when I saw him, you guys. Like so, he was you know full term, like literally nine hours prior to his due date. It was just the perfect timing. I feel like Mike really was aiming, like, and he was claiming that he's going to come on the due date. As you know, as some of you may know, there's such a low percentage of, of, of really babies that are born on the due date. So I was hoping he's going to come earlier because I was just like over, you know, all this like fourth trimester symptoms of pregnancy. But everything turned out i mean just beautiful moment you know i was so emotional being so overwhelmed i didn't even think right away to like take off you know my gown to do the skin to skin with, with him so when they handed me to him uh they handed me they handed him to me <laughs> i i just literally like no let's, let's back up a little bit well, we we both thought like as soon as the baby comes out the womb they hand the baby just straight to the mama like i feel like that's all movies i don't know if that's real or not but they didn't do that they, they, they can, I think, I with the umbilical like, cord. Right yeah, After umbilical the, cord, or like they just at least showing you right away. They didn't do that. They, just, but they didn't do it. And then one thing that we also didn't mention, like a scare moment, you guys, like with my last push, I was pushing him only for 20 minutes. TMI, whoever to know what he like, but it was such a short time. It's it really, there's some months, especially first time months, that push for like hours. So I was just super lucky. Uh, again, that turned out to be so quick. But like with my last push, the doctor warned me because he mentioned his cord is wrapped around his neck and with that push he needs to come up. Otherwise I don't know what type of emergency, what procedure they will have to come up with. So that also scared me so much that I didn't just do everything I could and it, it, it turned out that it was just great. It, it was great. He came here and <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, Veronica, she, she gangster like. <laughs> she was, as soon as the baby came, she was ready to walk out of the hospital at night with the cords <laughs> on her and just go home. Like, like she was, doctors had to tell because her, Because like, again, I, I think I had, this is such a blessing because it, it wasn't such a difficult, you know, birth for me. That's probably why I felt great. But yeah. thanks to the epidural, I'm sure. Because, you know, it, 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 I didn't feel that pain. And then you and then, got to cut the... Cord. I cut the, cut the cord. That was that was a cool moment. I was trying to record you guys, and then all of a sudden, the video you see, I'm taking the camera. I was so like looking at it, I was so emotional that the camera landed on the wall. So we don't have recorded the moment where he's cutting the cord because but, of my. But it was. But after that, once you know, they took his uh his footprint, handprints, like you know, got his height, measurements, everything. He was six pounds nine ounces and twenty inches long. Really a blessing, man. And after all that happened, yeah. after everything got cleaned up, they sent us upstairs. And I just want to give a shout out to my dad. He booked the flight right away. And he came literally the next morning. So when we woke up in the hospital with, with Brooklyn, my dad came in with a suitcase like right away. So we appreciate that. And Bronca's mom and, and stepdad, Achi, thank you guys too as well. They came a couple of days later and yes, stayed with us for three weeks. Two days later. Almost a whole month and uh, spent a lot of time with with their grandson so that was that was really cool that was amazing and then i know there's a lot of more family members that would love to you know be here when he was born and again maybe it's for the best because babies you know immunity system's not there yet so be too many people around mm -hmm. that that would be a little uh, you know probably stressful for us too right and yeah. then stressful as in like he he he's not ready to meet all these people but he will eventually meet the entire family, you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, we definitely do plan to, you know, travel. But uh, my mom's actually flying out here pretty soon. But we just wanted to give you all this, the birth story. We're going to have another video, just an uh, update of being parents. So we explain a lot more information there and just how he's been at during the night. And anybody who's looking to be a parent soon, we can let you know how it is for the first month. Because yes. we fresh in it. Like, <laughs> ain't, no, ain't no way out now. So. If you guys are parents and would like to share any advice uh, with us, like newbies in here, 
please comment down below. We would greatly appreciate it. We definitely so much appreciate your support. Also, we're going to be doing a Q&A soon. So if you guys have any questions, drop that in the comment section. And also, shoot us a DM on our Instagrams, which will be tagged below. But well, that's pretty much it, y'all. We appreciate y'all. We, we just living life is a lot slower now for sure <laughs> but it's, it's been a blessing to see him change and it's just cool man it's a different feeling slower but faster i feel like because the days go by so fast like our yeah. days are nights now and opposite you guys it's he's already weird. a month like yeah, it's crazy it, it's so different. you know it's slower in terms of that the stuff we've been doing because yeah. we're constantly like at yeah. home with him exactly but it flies so like some people who were telling us you know it flies so fast we're not lying, so mm -hmm. we, we get it now, like, yeah. wake up, he's gonna be 18. Like, and the thing is, he is changing every day, you guys. It's so unbelievable. Like, every day, you can see the changes. He's so much more responsive now, you know. But again, stay tuned yeah, for the like, update. <laughs> Thank yeah, you so know. much, whoever stick to the end of this video. We appreciate you listening to yeah. us and Monday, for sister. your support. Uh, can't wait to put more content out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you. Peace.